Radio Foundry, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we continue on with this project. Right now I'm going to uh, put the socket back on there, get it ready to be poured. I've already done, I'll point you down to it. I've already done one socket, okay, and uh, because this is such, it's so repetitious, you didn't need to see me do both of them. You'll, you'll get the idea on just watching the one. If I can get you focused in there, good. Okay, so we're doing, we're doing this in increments, okay? I am uh, going to set this to the side because I did not uh, did not de degrease that one. Here's my first one right here. Now, let's see. Let's loosen. Let's tighten. Okay. Now this one, you start off with a big one first, okay? Because this has got a lot of pressure in it. All right, you wouldn't be able to hold it. My hands are clean, by the way. You wouldn't be able to hold it easy at all. So you get this up, this big one, up as far as you can. To the point where it's not going to slide back down like that when you let go. And... to get it up there first all right now once this bites in it won't slide down but it's a this is a considerably easier method than the method I was originally taught which was using seizing wire to slowly but surely make this come back down to the shape of a uh, regular cable. Okay, bring this down as far as you can. As you can see, it's already bringing the uh, broomed out filaments to a, a compressed state, more compressed anyway. Just a little bit more. Okay, first step. Next step, put a smaller one on top. As irritating as this might be, it's considerably less irritating than the other way. I already degreased this one, you know, cleaned up real good. And basically all these are for is just for you to kind of try and help them line up so that they compress easier. We got what is that? That's oh, just a burr. I thought I had a, a filament, a wire sticking through the clamp, but it was not true. Anyway, so continue with this until you're able to put the ed the ends of these wires into the uh, socket. See how it's not possible yet.
remember until this is inside of this you got to take extreme care in uh, keeping everything that touches these broomed out filaments clean no grease no oil no dirt dust anything like that in the time that I was getting ready to put these together I had them all covered with big plastic bags so that no dust or anything like that could get down inside it after all if I was only making this for myself it wouldn't be that bothersome because I would always have a little bit of caution in my mind okay now that's there it's tight it's not gonna go nowhere anywhere it's not gonna go anywhere my English teacher just died or all of those uh, yearly uh, grades you know the grades that they give you in the Navy you know the part that says he speaks and writes well in English well I just did it I, just, I didn't just speak well in English just then but thankfully I knew enough to uh, correct myself all right back the other way now if I can get these compressed good enough I'll have plenty of filament to be able to force my way into the, the socket See, even when you get these all compressed down it still becomes a, uh, a little bit of a fight to try and get these forced into the uh, socket starting to sweat already oh Florida man but then again I guess even Connecticut is sweating right now I became very fond of Connecticut when I lived up there not just because I met my wife up there but because of the land the uh, basically the people too even though at first you really don't kind of get the uh, the way that the folks think up there because it, it you know the very first thing that I thought of when I I came from California where most everybody is you know kind of polite most everybody and uh, you know friendly at least up north in the Sacramento area and when I got out to Connecticut eh, they had more of a, a New York City feel to them didn't really want to get too uh, involved in uh, speaking to you that much but you know once once they got used to me they they fear figured that I wasn't going to uh, do anything bad to them being a stranger and all and uh, you know they were cool especially the family that I married into they're the excellent folks and then that's the thing that I miss about being up there is down here we have our own family my 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 uh, son and daughter and and all that and my wife of course and uh, well everybody does their own thing but up in Connecticut you never ran out of uh, family members to go visit if you get bored you can just go over and see your the aunt that lives down the road I think I'm breaking my plot better not they're husky there we go now every so often once you get to the point where these are almost compressed down you got to start helping them become pressed down 
Uh, yeah. You're getting loose, aren't you? Yes, you are. As you can probably see, how much uh, how much more these are straightening up. Let's see how close we are. Uh, still got more to go, but it's getting better. Anyway, that's some of the stuff I miss about Connecticut. The land, the old buildings, the style of buildings for up there in New England. That kind of stuff. It's almost like a, you know, I, I very absolutely adamantly espouse the theory of, of uh, reincarnation. And I'm thinking that, uh, that I must have lived up in Connecticut in a previous, previous life as much as I, uh, as fond as I am of Connecticut, hey, might be able to be able to get it on now. That's how close it is. We always have one or two wires that stick out that slow us down. Well, I still got more I can, I can collapse this. Anyway, I uh, almost feel badly that I don't live up in Connecticut if I think about it. If I don't think about it, then um, I'm fine for wherever I am. All right, she slid on. All right. Now, you gotta watch out what you're doing here. When you're taking this stuff off, don't let this fall back out. Otherwise, you gotta start all over again. Don't take this off first and then this off because if it springs on you or you in some manner or another uh, mess up not keeping pressure on this, you're gonna have to start all over again and that's time you wasted. So, this is almost open. Cross our fingers. Okay, it's open. Now, okay, she's on enough now. I know that I'm not going to let it fall. All right. So now it's a matter of just working this down. Once it opens up enough. You just work it down. See how they did it? As soon as I got it opened up enough, I was able to force it down the, the wires. All right, let's see if I can get this. It's far enough, it's halfway, it's all the way up to here now. It's up to there. So I, I can feel fairly confident that I'm not going to uh, sc screw up and uh, allow this to spring back out and the socket fall off. Plenty of pressure on here, that's for sure. And once it gets to the part in here, if you if you happen to have any one of those kind of sockets, there's a ring that that's machined on the inside. In theory, I guess it's supposed to uh, allow the the uh, zinc to form inside that ring and not accidentally get knocked. You know, have this have the uh, the zinc come out from somebody hitting it.
Okay. Now here's another thing you got to make sure of. Of course, if you were doing this for a customer, you'd have to you'd have to find out from them what they want. These sockets can either be aligned or opposing. In other words, let me let me I'll back you up a little bit so you can see. I'm hoping you can see. I'm going to guess that you can see down here there's the uh, the way this is facing you can either have it like this where it's 90 degrees from the way that is it's not lined up the same way or you can have it the same way as that okay uh, where once you get in here your hook or your or your your strap or whatever is going to go through here make a, a loop or a hook and that it would be the same way as that over there you wouldn't have to turn the hook 90 degrees or uh, you know or, or the uh, another shackle or anything like that so it depends entirely on they want it how they want it if it's for a customer if it's for you the the best odds are is that you just line them up like this to simulate the two loops you have a loop on a cable you have a loop on a cable they're crimped that's your lifting sling okay you're not going to be able to very easily i'm sure be able to uh Put a loop and then one that's 90 degrees to that loop and crimp it you probably could but how many times have you ever seen those lifting cables on sale that they're opposite nice tone nice solid casting anyway so here absolutely sure that your your broomed out filaments are not above this this shit this uh this part right here all right so let me take this off yeah that's the right one get this out of the way that we don't need it any longer now I kinda screwed up and what what I mean by that is that I didn't put a a uh, hose clamp down here at the bottom of this when I was wrapping it to make certain that it stayed where I where I originally put it so but the good news is is that it's not all undone down here uh, to where it would not be acceptable right now the way it is it's, it's fine you know most everybody uh, the inspectors would would, uh, would allow for that but it's kind of one of those one of those things where you're not too thrilled with things like that happening and moving on you and after this I have to wait once I get this done see I'm going to not only put these on but I'm going to put a caulk that is well for high ten high temperature. Uh, 
doesn't have it there. It fights temperatures from constant temperatures ranging from minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? I'm gonna be bringing this up to 400 degrees. So this will be, you know, well within its, its ability to uh, withstand the heat. And if you had to bring it up higher, this would still with, with, uh, withstand it up to 600 degrees, okay? And I wouldn't have used this if I was able to get my hands on some Forma jig. But the Forma jig that I was trying to get, well, I had it on order. Let me get you aimed back up. Okay, I had it on order at one time on eBay. And they the guys who was selling it it was an actual company that was selling it the guys who were selling it said hey sorry we just sold the last one you're too late and of course they credited my account they didn't steal any any money but uh that was a pain i would have liked to have been able to just had some you know form a jig there but you know what are you going to do? All right, let's see if I can hold this here and see uh, this is acting as a cushion between so that these hard uh, jaws don't scratch these up or screw them up in any way. Okay. Am I going to be able to do that? Going to have to get something. Try to use some leverage. Leverage is good, except it's this is trying to ease its way up. Let's see if this will do. Tightened up real good. <laughs> so, okay. Now, what I'm doing now is, you know, if in a perfect world, you could pour the, the zinc in this hole and it wouldn't come out the bottom and it wouldn't flow out the top. You'd have a nice zinc button right here that represented the, uh, the zinc slug that's in here wrapped around and bonded with all these steel uh, filaments or wires but you know, that's not that's not what happens okay so what we have to do is we have to make ourselves a dam and it's just like a regular dam that you might make for preventing a pond from overflowing we put a couple of dams on the top here to prevent the zinc from overflowing and then we put a dam in the bottom down here to prevent it from flowing out if they're you know most uh, in theory all these all these wires here uh, are going to be so compacted that the zinc ain't going to be able to flow out but uh, they have flowed out they have gone out the bottom before from what I've seen So, see if I can do this with some, pardon me, okay, well, that's, that's a dam. OK, 
Okay. Now if this stuff is sticky as it's supposed to be, that stuff will stick to that and not be moved by the weight of the molten metal. Okay. Now you want to have a little bit above so that when this solidifies inside here, that when it shrinks down, kind of like the, the shrinkage in a candle that you pour, that the stuff on top, you can melt it again to have it fill in that little, that little divot, that little shrink. Uh, that's gonna be in the, around the middle, okay? Now, don't know if you can see this or not, but I'm gonna put a bead down around here. Of course, these don't stay on there. Once uh, everything is over with, you, you pull that off so that it looks better. the position of this stuff there's a white wipe all this stuff off oh crap where did that come from eh. that came from there. Yeah, that's all right. Okay, we'll fill this in. Okay, and that's that. Let's see if I can get something to put over this end so it doesn't. So that it doesn't freeze up on me and, and allow it to be wasted. And then uh, one of the best things that you can do is use, if you can find it, Use a wire nut, a large wire nut. It's part of an electrical supply, a bunch of supply. This is a wire nut. If you've got them on hand, because it's got a coil of metal down in here, it can bite into the plastic that this is made out of and act as a cover to keep that from drying out on you and wasting it. Okay, so I've got this stuff made up. That's, sign that's done, that's done. Uh, this, by the way, is my vibrator. Well, pneumatic vibrator and what it's doing it's going to be doing is going to be replacing the 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 uh, thing that we normally did do well let's say that well, I mean we had five people in the shop so you're obviously going to have more than just one person doing the, the job but when the per one person comes over and uh, starts pouring it in there you have another person with a I don't know you could be a wrench could be a large uh, screwdriver, whatever, it vibrates this so that when you're pouring it down, if there's any trapped air bubbles in there, they'll be released 
from the vibration. They'll be knocked loose so they can go up and allow all of the uh, zinc that's pouring, being poured in there to establish and bond with the, uh, the wire filaments. This is, is it laying over? No, it's laying over because it's not been straightened up. Well, I'm going to have to make sure that that's straightened up before I pour anything in it. So, vibrator ready to, uh, to vibrate this whole affair right here. The wood here acts as a cushion so that the vibration doesn't go everywhere else. It just basically stays right here and does its job. The, uh, what I'm going to be using instead of a torch, because I don't have a torch, I'm going to be using one of those nice brand new Wagner heat guns. Okay, This heat gun can go as high as, according to the dial on there, See if I can get it way in there. According to that dial, you can get this heat gun as hot as 1350 degrees in the high setting or 1250 degrees in the low setting. All right, all I got to do is heat that up to 400 degrees. So basically, I'll just have it in the low setting and I'll set it to 450 and uh, we'll see how long this takes to heat up. I'm not going to do anything with this until this is all set, all the, all the caulk is set. And so once this gets, I'm ready to go, because I am waiting on another piece of equipment, I can have this here aimed at that I'll have to figure out exactly how well yeah that looks no I want a little more there that's a good thing <clears throat> and then then I put this on there and it's nice and balanced and I can let that go. This shield is to keep the heat from coming down here and messing that up. This is going to just go basically in the middle of this shield or rather in the middle of the uh, socket. I'll get it closer and uh, then I'll just be keeping track of the uh, the, the temperature of the, the, uh, the socket over here by way of the uh, infrared uh, temperature sensor that I have and uh, and well here's another thing for those of you who wanted to you know pour molten metal and yet like me don't have enough training or enough talent to uh, make wooden patterns. They have something out there nowadays, and I'm sure you've heard of it. It's called a 3D printer, okay? And I bought one. I had, before I designed and, and manufactured this, I had nothing to hold this heat gun. I was forced to uh, consider the possibility that I'd have to be standing here just doing this all the time until it was ready to go. But now I made this stand with my 3D printer. May you know you, you the 3D printer is so easy if you're if, if you're the least bit handy with the uh, design and stuff. You may not have the the uh, talent to make things out of wood patterns I mean or you may not have the talent to uh, or the equipment to make things out of wood pattern wise but this the 3d printer which I'll show you in a bit uh, y you know if you get the software and you got oh, everything all put together it's so easy to make stuff 
all I did was design I said okay I need something to hold this this handle at an angle of course it was going to be a cylinder all right then I needed something to hold this in the position so this cylinder had to be put on a platform so that I can put a weight on this to keep that from falling over and I also I needed to have a way of having the electricity going to the to the heat gun as this is being held so I put a hole in the side of the cylinder all it is now is that you put this in position like I showed you a second ago you put a weight on here to hold it plug it in turn it on aim it where you want it and it's going to be you know I can I can check I can check the uh, the temperature it can go between this and the the uh, the zinc that I'll be melting at the same time back and forth and when they're both ready then I can uh, I can take the zinc and pour it uh, turn this on first take the zinc and pour it and uh, as I'm pouring it the vibration will force it down into the, all the, the tiniest nooks and crannies and you'll have a solid zinc plug in there and this won't fall apart okay very nice okay um, but that's the thing I'm waiting on now so I what I do have is I do have a, a lead pot but what it was going to wind up being is that once the zinc was ready to be poured I was going to have to pick up the lead pot the hand or rather the the handle on the lead pot pick it up high enough to come over here then touch the bottom of the hot pot and try and pour it that way I could have done it but why do that when you can just get yourself uh, a good sized uh, ladle that's what I'm waiting on now as a ladle okay coming from McMaster car of course and uh, usually here in North Florida because they've got a warehouse in, in Cal in uh, Georgia it usually only takes a couple of days all right Monday this is this is all right come on work this is Wednesday Monday was a holiday so yesterday morning they put it in in transit or put it on the delivery and it should come in sometime today okay once I get that that uh, ladle then all I got to do is just set up to melt gonna let this uh, let this dry overnight so you know it can cure and uh, I won't again you know because I've done this all my life got so in I got so excited to get something done that I I didn't let things uh, cure like they're supposed to so it's gonna it's gonna be cured um, yeah the vibrator here which operates off of uh, pneumatic air let's see if I have any pressure over here I do have some pressure so I can show you what it's going to be like some pressure and once I get both things are heated up and ready to go I turn that on well I pressurize the uh, the air uh, cylinder and turn that on doesn't have to be super loud just needs to give vibration here and uh, then bring this bring the ladle over and pour it put it back on the heat uh, have this turned off of course I, I want it to solidify if there's a real good shrink in the middle of the in the middle of the zinc then I just heat up my heater here go over it easy and let it flow together so it's a solid flat uh, you know piece of zinc plug and that'll be all done okay
So now I'll go ahead and take you on over to uh, and show you what the uh, the 3D printer is all about. My little foundry office, you might call it. Anyway, this in front of you is. Let's see if I can get some, most of that light out of there. This is the Maker Gear 3D printer. I did a lot of, uh, you know, investigation on these. I didn't want to spend a lot of money on, on 3D printers if it wasn't going to be any good. And the most of the people that I've ever seen, or rather uh, investigated from, said the Maker Gear was the best, the least problematical less problems that you ever have and in the couple of months that I've had it I got to agree okay but don't try and put your put your 3d printer if you get it and try and put it on the computer as much as I enjoy computers and as 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 good as I am on computers which I'm, I'm not ta talking uh, you know the person who can who can repair computers and all that it just I've been playing with computers since the 80s but the uh, as much as I understand computers uh, I wasn't able to get this to work on the computer because of the the incompatibility of of drivers and it just wasn't acting right so what I wound up having to do here's the things I bought I bought the maker gear I bought this the uh, software that went with the Maker Gear, and then I bought this, which takes the place of your computer. Okay, this, uh, which has a card right there where my finger is touching, an SD card in it. That's where it, it takes the uh, information from to make whatever you're trying to make. I have been going non-stop ever since I was able to get this thing going. Starting to slow down a little bit now. But I had a time where I had all kinds of weapons that I have been collecting. I, I loved axes and swords and stuff. But I didn't have a whole lot of things to hang it on the walls. All right. Now all those, like I still have some stuff you know on the shelves and uh, still got to get some hangers for that but almost all the all the uh, weapons that I have are now on the wall okay the vast majority of those things were either laying in a corner laying on a shelf like this or in a closet and now because of the 3d printer I was able to make a bunch of wall uh, hangers for instance this kind which i designed and uh i've been i've made a bunch of them and now i've got a nice display on the wall and the like in the navy uh, a thing uh, in its place and a place for everything now my stuff is there okay I've even got a, a wall hanger for the uh, antenna, which was hanging from a nail and looking really crappy. Okay, uh, so you get the uh, this Maker Gear, which was under two grand. You get the software, which was about 150 bucks. You get that, which I cannot remember what it was, but it's uh, it was under 200 dollars. I know that. With those three combined, you've got a, a really good, well-designed product-making 3D printer, okay? Uh, to do the designing, you can get a, uh, like, the one I got, the, the software I got, and I got it free online, was, it, it was called 123D Designing, okay? Works perfectly works beautifully of course you're if you've never done it before you're going to be behind be behind the learning curve but it's easy to learn okay you work with simple simple uh geometric shapes for the most part 
and the, you progress from there, okay? So now I have, oh yeah, I was going to show you something else. Be right back. Okay, now this is a mess right now, but it's, you know, there, the, here's my molding bench, and there's one of the, uh, the molds that I never poured, really, because I was too dang lazy. But it was, it was uh, an experiment to see if this sand would actually work, and it works fine. And the deal is, though, you need certain things, okay? Now, I don't remember if I was on the Yosemite or the Sierra, Piedmont, maybe even the, the Fulton. I don't remember. One of the guys in the shop convinced one of the MRs to make a pouring sprue, or rather a pouring basin uh, device. And basically, all you did was, once you got this, uh, you know, packed in there, and you've got it uh, on, and, all, and, you, and you could do it at any time, really, you can cut the sprue hole and then do this, or you can do this first and then cut the sprue hole first. But essentially, you take this to form your, your pouring basin. Okay, just put it in there, and there's your pouring basin. Okay, this stuff is all dry right now, so it's filling in, but you get the idea. I made that with the uh, 3B, 3D printer. Basically, just a uh, conical shape and a uh, cylinder shape. Okay, I wanted to get or make a, uh, wanted to make a, wrapping tool okay we had one very much like this in the shop one of my shops and it worked real well you just wrapped here and if it was a very sensitive or time you want to just do nice light taps you made you did use that end okay i made this first with the intention of ramming it up and uh pouring it but i said hey 3d printer make the uh make everything so there is the splash basin runner runner feeds into the you know this would be the uh end gates at any uh, at any other time but it fit perfectly to act as an end gate and then uh i cut it off when it's once it solidifies and i break it out i cut it off and as this is well let's see if i can just put it in here when this is in there like that you ram this up on top this is plenty big for something like this, okay? And so you see how it, it, it'll go down, down into the, uh, the sand, pour into that, fill that up, pour into the runner, fill that up, and then pour into the mold cavity there. Pattern, my first pattern, rather not my first pattern, but a good pattern to make a wrapping tool. Here's my first pattern. I wanted to make a uh, a lead hammer mold, okay? Uh, just as as a you know a a project, just to go ahead and make a lead hammer mold, and also to see if I could make a pattern using the 3D printer. It worked fine, okay? It'll be well, it'll be like that. There's your, there's your pouring basin, right like that. And this will pour right in the middle of it. And then uh, everything will pour nicely. So now, if you get all this stuff, you can, after you learn as much as you can learn, can make almost every type of pattern you want to, even plaques. Right now, I'm trying to learn how to make plaques. I can, I, and using uh simple geometric shapes i can do most of that but there's other other things that are actual drawings and stuff i have to work on trying to make that okay i'm behind the learning curve on things like that i could just carve uh things out of uh out of wood because i can carve wood uh, not as good as a pattern maker but i can and uh put that in the middle of the the plastic shape but I'm go I'm going to try and and actually design the uh, the thing on on the the, the computer because it's it's much faster, okay. So 
that's the news I have a new toy and it, I'm able to use it to make uh, patterns okay I highly recommend that if you don't already have one to get one if for nothing else then you can make all types of stuff for your house to you know to get your house more uh, put together hanging stuff up on the walls things like that so they ain't just hanging in a, or laying in a corner all right so back to you guys the power's almost gone so uh, until next time Liberty Call